stealth in video games it seems like an intriguing video your boy is a curious man and i do love me some gaming so let's learn about stealth in video games this is 005 that game had enemy vision god damn they got the vision lights man yo <laughs> i'm a goddamn gamer bitch hitman is a ball and a tuxedo how are you gonna get me to play that game man The art of being completely undetected, as if you were never even there. I gotta play the original. Oh, that noise. Me. I am that noise. <laughs> I am the must have been the wind. I am the one whose foot. He is the one. Damn. Stealth. <laughs> Man. Stealth is a gaming concept so commonplace. You're probably shocked if you can't. I'm already feeling like the green screen, the usage of green screen. Good on bro for creativity, man. Very strong intro. I'm with it. Crouch behind enemy and press square in your oh, What game is that? World game. But stealth is a lot more than just a simple takedown or tacked on gimmick. It's a powerful tool. Mary Jane. To completely change how a video game is designed and played. The act of sneaking around has had such a monumental and storied impact on the gaming medium. But Ooh, when I got to play all the Metal Gears, man. How do we make it better? How do we make it good? It's important that we talk about it all right here. Ooh, hey, listen, talk to me about Splinter Cell, bro. Splinter Cell was my shit, man. The OG one, though. I'm talking on the original Xbox. Black box built in the factory with the e-boot. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, listen. I'm down to learn. Let's go. The birth of stealth. What started it? If you ask a gamer what the first stealth game is, you'll likely get some different answers. Oh, it's uh, Castle Wolfenstein. Oh, like, shit. Disguises. Nah, bro, the book of Guinness of being... That was way before my time. Green is sparkly says it's 005. That game had enemy vision. God lights. damn, they got the vision lights, man. Yo, let's go back real quick. That bitch got the vision lights. I didn't even know this game existed. 005. That game had enemy vision cones. Assassin's Creed Altair <laughs> Chronicles is a video game that I own. But the correct answer actually seems to be Shoplifting Boy in 1979. Interesting. Pac-Man by a year, you take on the role of the titular iconic boy as you uh, walk around a store avoiding this guy and stealing Ty Doll or something. Okay, nah, nah, nah. Hold on, though. Hold on, though. Hold on, though. Why the shoplifter black, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why he couldn't be the dude with the, with the, with the white head? Why he had to be the dude with the black hair? We and now to be fair, the year makes a lot of sense. But why we gotta do this, man? I, I'm trying to watch this video in peace. <laughs> now I'm talking shit. Let's go. This prehistoric, barely comprehensible game still successfully established two core tenets of the stealth genre. Don't get caught. Grab anything that isn't bolted to the ground. Okay, so now let's fast forward okay. to 1987, and let me tell you something, man. You ever heard of a fucking coach? <laughs> Metal Gear is the godfather of all modern stuff. Really, eh? Mr. Ludo narrative dissonance himself, Clint Hawking. Without Metal Gear, there would be no stealth games. <sighs> That's big praise, man. But it makes sense. I never played the OG Metal Gear. I think. I don't know if I posted the Splinter Cell video. I, I reacted to the Splinter Cell. I didn't post that. Okay, so I'm saying something for a video I didn't post yet, but in that video, I mentioned how the first Metal Gear that I played was uh, Metal Gear 4, and that got me into the series as a whole, man, because it, it, it just didn't seem, I thought it was just like a, a, a war thing. I didn't think anything about it was fantasy or like sci-fi or any, I just thought it was a normal dude doing stealth, Solid Snake. And then I played that game and I saw like um, um, the Mantis boss where you got to you had to disconnect your, your your damn DS3, I think like and it was a play on the boss from part two. I think guns of not guns of something. No guns of the Patriots was four sons of liberty. But anyway, it was a play on something you, you had to do in that match. and I couldn't figure out how to hit this bitch, man. Pretty much all the main bosses, the Patriots, they were dope. And I'm like, wait a minute, I got to play all the Metal Gear. So the next one I did was Revengeance. I didn't play 3, 2, 1, or 5. So him saying this, I could believe that, man. If I played the first Metal Gear, I probably would have been on board ASAP. But I, I wasn't thinking about it, to be honest. I, I was playing 
JRPGs. More so than any game before, Metal Gear Solid ified <laughs> uh, stealth as its own genre. Oh, Love this was before this the PlayStation one. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Conflict. Shoot everything on the screen with your big, big gun. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, shmups were going crazy. Oh, Contra? Uh, you're not some super soldier with infinite ammo. You're a fragile little snake, and you actually want to avoid combat as much as possible. Quietly dispatch guards. Acquire gadgets like suppressors to use guns without alerting everyone. Metal Gear was originally... Metal Gear. Okay, okay, okay. And then Metal Gear Solid. So is this Big Boss? Don't kill me on that, by the way. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. It's supposed to be a combat heavy shooter, but because the MSX couldn't have all these bullets and enemies on screen at once, Kojima, in a stroke of genius, utilized his limitations and realized the power of disempowerment. And remember that word, write it down, because it's very important <laughs> to me and my invisible body. My man is horny as hell, and this is not how humans talk, but man, I so deeply cherish him and his productions, okay? Don't forget, they're his. What game was that? Okay. Now let's fast Five? forward a bit to the most important year for stealth games and maybe just all video games in general. 1998 PlayStation? Three sacred seminal stealth games released in 1998 and every modern stealth game Wait, I, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to see if I can if I can guess. Metal Gear Solid? Tenchu? Like 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 the ninja? Tenchu cuz that had some stealth elements. And what the fuck is that? Oh, that's just the glare. And one more. It can't be Splinter Cell 1998. I'm gonna say Tenshu Z is one of them. Metal Gear Solid. And I, I, I got nothing. Mechanic can likely be traced back to one of these three games. Metal Gear Solid. Okay. Thief and my boy. I'm a goddamn gamer, bitch. Now, granted, it's not Tenshu Z, but it was Tenshu. I knew Tenshu was busting for stealth around that point. I don't know about Thief, though. I've never played Thief, but I got two of them. Solid, well, Metal Gear Solid and Tenchu. Listen, man, I got to play the Tenchu game still. Man, I'm telling y'all, your boy is a certified gamer, man. Don't be underestimating high key, man. Like, at my core, I'm a nerd. I like video games, anime. <laughs> I like video games, anime, and 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 shit. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, man, you know, I blend in with society. I like to go out, dance drink type shit anyway i'm done metal gear solid is a straight up gaming monument for so many reasons the cinematic presentation and voice acting the creative fourth wall break i gotta play the first one he's himself and then you let a wolf pee on you come to think of it kojima productions kind of have a lot of, of pee type beats but i gotta play death stranding as well enemy ai that gave you clear chirps on what they're thinking or doing the game had an amazing sense of feedback you always understood what was going on mm. you showed us how tense and atmospheric a stealth game could be when Oh, this was first person? first person perspective giving the player a lot of freedom while also disempowering them there's that word again to <laughs> i like that a fact sense of danger big interactable maps with mechanics like light and sound engaging with the player's abilities Ooh. And environment. so thief was the first one to really give the ability to remove light that's something splinter cell really benefited from Unless Tenshu has the same ability as well, but I already know Tenshu about to go crazy with the movement. Tenshu got some movement, man. Tenshu gives you nightmares if you watch your brother play it at a young age. Oh, and shit. Prioritized freedom of movement within a 3D stealth sandbox. He had a so grapple? What? Or across rooftops and do flashy, cool, big sword press square behind enemy sword move. Hmm, that sounds a little bit familiar. Scratch his head. Fucks. Okay, his Yo, I didn't think of Tenshu as a pioneer for that kind of movement. Now, granted, was there any other game similar to that? No, because that's PlayStation 1. You know something I was thinking about? Y'all might not know about this game. If you do know about this game, I f*** with you, man. You, you somebody I could probably have a fun conversation with. We could hang out and we, we got similar interests. But Atoji. Atoji was a From Software game that was doing some crazy shit when it came out, man. Destructible environments. Crazy movement spells oh if you know a toji man you know what i'm talking about that was when like ninja gaiden <laughs> that was when ninja gaiden was busting and shit that era what's gonna happen when an enemy oh my god i'm literally a phantom menace legendary song man well track 
Getting caught in a stealth game never feels good, but it especially doesn't feel good if you don't fully understand why or how you got caught. Mm. It doesn't matter if the rules are unrealistic, it matters if they're consistently unrealistic. Got it. I don't care if the He's AI right. AI is dumb as hell, that's fine. I care that's Tenchu Z, I think. Dumb as hell. Wait, 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 is it? In a way that I can predict and manipulate. Do guards look up? Do wait, wait a minute. Ooh, damn. That game, I don't know what game that was, but that, that gave me some Zelda vibes. So, like, it's interesting to see all these games and how the concepts get, like, adopted into different series as games evolve. The guards look down. Will guards hear me if I run? Will a guard see through my disguise if I stand too close to them and whisper my birthday? It's December 28th, by the way. If one person <laughs> sees me, then why does everyone in the galaxy know exactly where I am now? Oh, I hate that one. Here, then playing the game will feel like trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle, but the pieces keep changing size, <laughs> color, and shoot you with glock. It's so much better when the game clearly communicates Ooh. that, hey, this is where the enemy thinks you are. Oh, this Splinter Cell looks dope. Game. Which one is this? The enemy yells, I think she's over there. The radar in Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 is great for giving you clear feedback, but you can also end up playing a lot of those games just staring up at the square. It's the same with games that have that magical X-ray see through. Interesting. It's very easy to end up playing through a very beautiful game through oh, this ugly lens, which just is not ideal. In a social stealth puzzle box game like Hitman, the X-ray vision makes a bit more sense because Hitman is another one I haven't played yet, man. Y'all think I should play that? What is it like three Hitmans? There's like maybe three or four. I gotta get into Hitman, man. You wanna? I'm sure you could guess why I never got into it based on what I've been telling you already. The main character was Ball, goddammit. Now, I know there's God of War, but your boy got some sauce, man. He's he, pale white with a damn tattoo. Hitman is a ball n and a tuxedo. How are you going to get me to play that game, man? Nothing about it looked the... <laughs> Nothing about it looked appealing, man. So I never played Hitman. To keep track of so much information at once. But for more active, like action stealth games, I think Far Cry actually established. Ooh, I've never played Far Cry either. With the marking mechanic that Metal Gear Solid 5 also later adopted. It feels a lot more immersive and engaging to actually have to pay attention and clock the enemies yourself. Right. But then the game gives you an assist and says, okay, we'll help you keep track of everything now. But even with all this help, sometimes you might still mess up and get caught from the, the shadows. Hell? I've been here the whole time. That's right. <laughs> this video is actually about difficulty. Oh, difficulty is a serious one. If I had a nickel for every time I talked about Anthony Birch on this channel, I, I think I'd have three. Anthony has a great video on difficulty where he talks about Metal Gear Solid 3 and how playing on the highest difficulty of Extreme actually forced him to play a stealth game like a stealth game. AKA, usually when you get caught in Snake Eater, you can pretty easily just CQC everyone and run to the exit. But oh. Extreme, you die a lot faster, so you can't as easily just brute force your way through. Interesting. One simple change forced him to actually utilize all of the different Kojima productions at his disposal and improvise creative stealth solutions ghost of tsushima a game that i haven't talked about a lot on oh, so many games i need to play man there's so many games my backlog is insane i got no time to game man i got no time to game but i want to play this too man i know this game got stealth oh i do know that much channel but one that i deeply cherish just look at this he looked like anamusha yeah, that's gonna pump the gas all right playing on normal difficulty the first time i had zero issue just sprinting into combat all of the time and as great as the combat is ghost being a disciple of to drop the base tenchu it also has a lot of flashy fluid stealth ninja stuff interesting Our grapple hook chain assassination kunai flute song the modern tenchu for real like, you don't really need to use any of that stuff. On lethal difficulty, though, it's a completely different situation. The enemies now kill you in, like, one to two hits, but also you kill them in, like, one to two hits. The kunai goes from being a fun, cute little toy to an essential difference between life and death. A smoke bomb isn't just a cool move. It is the key to surviving <laughs> the onslaught of enemies. Every time I'm down. Every spent can drastically change your chances of survival. This kind of increase in difficulty is the right kind of increase in difficulty not just for stealth games but for all games in general i gotta Don't try this spongier with way more health raise the stakes in a way that pushes what is the this doing correct all of the tools in their tool belt and for most stealth games that magic word say it with me you wrote it down disempowerment yes to utilize stealth and sekiro for these exact reasons 
everything will kill the Sekiro is fun you if you don't the s word is sword one of the greatest stealth levels ever all gillied up in call of duty 4 has extremely punishing combat if you get caught because yeah you are severely outnumbered my fuck sneak around I will never play call okay, cod no disrespect to the community though the community though sorry I'm, I'm just not a cod guy you know what i'm saying i'm not an fbs guy in general i like me some halo a little overwatch I, I like it with some fantasy to it but when it's when it's like very simulator-esque and realistic i'm not a realistic kind of gamer man you know i like to stimulate my brain with some fantasy shit Thing. What is this called? Getting caught sucks, but it doesn't always mean the fun part has to be over. In games like Far Cry, Metal Gear Solid 5, uh, The Last of Us games, gameplay can exist in this constant flow between stealth and combat, leading to some really great- This video is cool, I like this. Doing whatever you can to survive. This is why The Last of Us games on survival difficulty have amazing stealth gameplay. The foliage the looks great, what the, the hell? It's meant to be played the way that you're, you know, trying to negotiate which resources you're gonna use because there's actual stakes and it's the same thing with multiplayer stealth some of the most thrilling stealth moments in gaming can actually be found in online games mm. i don't just mean ass creed or splinter cell or metal gear online as great as the ass creed are in a battle royale you're literally scrambling to survive using anything that you can find whether it's a bush Bruh. or fortnite ain't no way that dude is a bot playing stealthily can hold a huge advantage thinking on your feet to trick actual other human players and prop hunt is full-on yes and improv but as great as those improvised moments are, sometimes stealth games will actually push the player away from improvising, whether they mean to or not. Save and rating. Saving and rating. Oftentimes, a stealth game can make the player feel inclined to reload a save after getting caught. The Dishonored series is a really interesting... Dishonored is another series I gotta play, man. I remember one of them, uh, the artwork... Artwork is with a, a, a girl that has a mask on. I got to play that too, man, bro. There's so many games I want to play. It's insane, man. I, it's to the point where I'm pretty sure I won't even get to a, a quarter of them before I die, man. Example. I've enjoyed playing Dishonored the most after cranking up the difficulty to at least. Oh, it's first so person. That has higher stakes. Cough, cough, disempowerment, cough. But Dishonored also lets you save whenever you. I want. think that's the girl. At the end of every level, you also get this rating screen, which shows how many people saw you and how many people you killed, which changes your chaos rating, which then changes the story. Don't get me wrong. I think Dishonored really does want you. You to be able to play however you want and i think it's a common misconception oh i see it kind of forces you low chaos run is a good ending. it forces you to play a certain way okay different but i do think that when you frame it in these terms and you have a rating screen paired with the ability to save scum it might subconsciously push a player toward a play style that's oh shit i got caught and i killed someone okay time to reload the save right I find it's so much more liberating to just let things play out and see what this makes sense gameplay can happen the new hitman games have the same thing amazing look at this dude man really I'm, I'm gonna buy a game where a dude wearing a damn tuxedo and a ball head really that gonna bring me mr fantasy to buy the game i'm gonna spend money on a car a, a damn disc that shows me this really now i heard great things about hitman now don't get me wrong but in my defense that's the reason i didn't buy the game like come on now i'm looking at the case of the game and i see this dude you think i'm buying that shit no stealth sandboxes that subtly discourage the player this rooftop looks like mirror's edge gameplay moments because oh no my rating at the end will be bad if i do this fun thing mm. so I better just reload the save in all of this like i mean this entire video was oh my god that's a lot of editing the following thing hitman freelancer is the greatest stealth game ever made stop the cap <laughs> Really? I mean, literally everything I've talked about, it's in this game. Freelancer is the roguelike add-on that uses all of the same levels, but gives you random objectives and targets across a series of consecutive campaigns. Okay. So there's no saving and reloading. It's just you, your targets, and a bunch of optional incentives to make extra money so that you can buy better gear. A roguelike Hitman. Rogue. Freelancer's random objectives pushes you into situations that you would likely never get into while playing the base game. We'll give you extra money 
money if you wear a funny disguise and throw an explosive baseball at this guy. Oh, you want me to use a goddamn katana? All right, you drop the base. Let's <laughs> the Reload a save. Getting caught in Freelancer feels extremely tense because if you die, you fail the campaign. But because Hitman's enemy AI and disguise oh, system shit. are so fun to play around with and manipulate, oh yeah, sue me. <laughs> nah, that kill the kill was called Oyasumi. Good night, Oyasumi Nasai. <laughs> Game of kill. The overall what? feeling of freelancer is who gives a shit about a rating? Just get the job done however possible. Freelancer. Ah, damn, he punched him right behind the cranium. Club with how much improv is going on. All right, so in summary, what did we learn today? A I am invisible, and there is unfortunately no cure for that. B. Disempowerment is a very powerful tool disempowerment. For C. Emergent gameplay featuring improvised creative stealth solutions will always bang. And D. Kojima Productions are in fact productions by Hideo Kojima. Thank you so much for watching my video. <laughs> what are hey, this is cool, man. <laughs> Yo, shout out to bro, man. This is a very entertaining video. You know I like to watch little informative shit, switch it up, you know, calm vibes, a little educational shit. But this is very cool to watch, man. Get to see how he broke down the way stealth really works, the uh, the positives, the negatives, the inspirations in the core. I didn't know Thief was even a game, man, but to know that Tenshu really ha <coughs> had that much of an impact on stealth in general and the praise that the Splinter Cell creator gave Metal Gear, like a lot of things you just wouldn't know if you don't tune into these kind of videos. And that's why the world is an interesting place, man. Everybody have different interests and, and they dive deep into different things. And you just find so much little avenues and crevices on YouTube that <clears throat> like for me, I, I spend most of my time my free time at work so like when i got free time at work i'd be on youtube just like going to either trending or any region of the website that i don't frequent because my frequent like like if i i would just be reacting to the same shit if i go to where i frequent so i try to search things i don't usually find and that's how i come across videos like this man so now i follow his channel and the more stuff i watch from him i'll get recommended stuff based on this algorithm uh, record and then I'll, you know, it's interesting, man. YouTube is a vast, uh, a vast space. I think bro here got two million, man, and I didn't even know he was a thing, Nakey Jakey. So it's, it's so cool. How? <clears throat> fuck, my throat is so dry. I give up, man. It's so cool how you can always find new content on YouTube, man. Like. I encourage you just just like broaden your YouTube palette and just watch different kinds of videos. That's what I that's why I like this channel, man. The literally I, and I don't think I had the chance to tell anybody because I just started uploading videos. But the, the purpose of this channel is because I get I had a few other channels, but I got pigeonholed into one lane and I get bored doing the same kind of video over and over. So the purpose of this is for me to be able to watch this kind of shit. A reaction I'd usually watch another kind of video if I want to cook I can cook if I want to make a drink I can make a drink if I want to pop pimples I can pop pimples but I can do anything that's why I like you too anyway I'm ranting man I'm ranting but all in all fantastic video here if you all are liking that content you know the spiel man hit that like button sub up show your boy some love show Nakey Jakey some love I need to start doing that at the end of my videos as well like shouting out the the person that I'm reacting the video for to show some respect but if I don't do that the link is also <clears throat> the link is also in the description so I'm gonna get on out my throat is dry I can't do this anymore I need water I'm gonna see y'all for the next video peace out